Hey, ¿qué pasa, Calexico? Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, like always, before we begin, I want to thank a couple of people. I want to thank my anchor sponsors. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jake and Camilo. I also want to thank Eddie Lopez from Roots Creative. I also want to thank my friends at Dents on Border. If you have any dents on your car, make sure you contact Dents on Border. I'm going to leave their link to their Facebook page on the notes of the of the podcast. I also want to thank Sergio's Tacos and Hot Dogs with eight years of experience serving the Imperial San Diego and Yuma counties with Mexicali style hot dogs and taquizas. Contact Sergio at 760-562-0057 or look for Sergio on Facebook, Sergio's Tacos and Hot Dogs. I also want to thank David Gastelum. If you're thinking of buying or selling home in the Imperial or San Diego county, counties, make sure you contact David. He's not only a realtor, but an investor with over 20 years of experience. And you'll teach along the way one of the most important investments of your life. So contact David at 760-235-9576 or look for him on Facebook, David Gastelum. All right, guys. Well, welcome to episode 126, I believe. Um, today, I have two really special guests. Um, I found them on Instagram, and I thought they were doing some really, really cool things, especially for... Um, I, I mean, growing up, for me growing up, um, I wasn't really um, taught or we didn't really talk about, you know, the Mexican Mexican culture or just culture in general. Um, actually, last week or a couple of weeks ago, I had a Mark Beltran and we talked, uh, talked about w why this is a thing that happens to a lot of first generation um, Mexican-Americans. And I, th I think it's something that stuck with him because like a couple of days later, he's like, Hey, I was thinking about the question you, you, you sent me, you asked me. And, um, he said that, I mean, give me an, an answer to it, but I, I feel that what uh, my two guests today are doing is really important and, and, um, kind of, um, keeping our traditions and, and our culture, you know, alive, especially, you know, with our younger generations. Um, my guests today are Aide Yanez and he, he said, Barrett, um, and they're the creators and hosts of uh, Niños Book Fest. Um, thank you guys for being being on today. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you Gracias. for inviting us. Exacto. Thank you for the invite. So, um, before we get into the whole Niños uh, Book Fest, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Um, I don't know who wants to start first. Uh, Giselle can start. <laughs> so, thank you, Jay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Giselle Barret or Barrett. Um, soy una maestra de tercer grado. I'm a, a dual language immersion teacher, a third grade teacher. I've been teaching for seven years. And I grew up, um, I consider myself a border child porque vivía en Tijuana, cruzaba San Diego to... Um, visit, más que nada, um, but my life was between two worlds, but I grew up mostly speaking Spanish and learning English at school, and later I went to school, I went to um, graduate school in San Diego, well, I went to college, I did community college, and then San Diego State, and got my credentials there, and stayed, and started working at an elementary school. Why? Because I wanted to share with everyone our culture, our language, and let children know that anyone has the potential to do whatever they want. doesn't matter what grades you get. At the end of the day, you become adults, and if you follow your passion, you will be able to. And that is why I became a teacher, because of my brother. He had difficulties at school. I was always like the mm. eight-class student. But I saw him struggle, and he thought that he would not be able to do anything of his life. And my mom said, ay, pobrecito, a lo mejor no va a poder ir a la universidad. And I would say, no, ma, you don't say that. Why would you say that? Just because he is not an A-plus student. So it was kind of my job to kind of, like, always push my, my brother to um, do whatever he wanted. And he is successful doing whatever he wants. He, he went He studied um, hospitality. He went to Australia. He came back. He's doing his project. And I think that's what I want to share with students, to go back into their roots, their passions, and just look in, within the, themselves and look at uh, the intelligence that they have and use that to become um, powerful citizens in their communities. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but if you do it with passion, that's what matters mm -hmm. and helping 
No, no bienvenidos a todos. <laughs> That's awesome. So, hola a todos. My name is Aide Yanes. Uh, some, some of you also know me for Heidi. And I'm a children's book designer. So I've been working in publishing, you can say, for the last eight years. But also I'm the founder of Mexicans Art. So Mexicans Art is a project that I started during my college uh, years. It was my college thesis. So it's just a representation of Mexican icons for children. So I started with that over the years and has developed into um, a lot of really cool uh, little products like coloring books, um, stationery, wrapping paper. And thanks to my Mexicans art, I have been able to connect to a lot of uh, great people. I'm an immigrant from Mexico, originally from Tepic, Nayarit. Uh, I'm the only one in my family that immigrated to the States. Everybody's still in Mexico. But thank you to my Mexicans, I had the opportunity to meet the fabulous Giselle over five years ago in a little booth at the farmer's market, and she was one of my first customers. So thank you, Giselle. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and, and it's crazy um, because something that I kind of like saw in com common was, uh, you know, um, what you said so it was um you know she was a a border kid like you know i am border kid you know i grew up here in calexico and and um you know mexicali is right next door and and it's it's crazy how um it, a lot of a lot of times we can we don't really associate with with people from um uh, tijuana or or san isidro or, or san diego because you know it's so much it's it's the opposite right like um san diego is like the big city and I mean, Tijuana, is, it's, still, it's still big, but, you know, for us, it's like we live in a town of like 30, 40,000 people. And then we have, a, a um, you know, the capital of, of Baja California, that's um, like a million plus people next door. So we don't really associate much with people from, from you know, the um, San Diego area because they're the much bigger city. But, you know, we have a lot of similarities. You know, we a lot of people that live there are going back and forth and, and, and you know, living both cultures. But I feel that um what we lack is you know like something like where a lot of you um a lot of people that um you know do uh talk about you know their culture mexican culture are people that go to like farmer's market like go to like barrio logan and they have all these really cool you know places where you can talk about or see um you know the mexican culture being you know promoted a lot and here in calexico i feel like we don't have that do you, do you know can, can you pinpoint why that would be you know that you know people from there have more um of a like a, a, a um a wanting to uh promote their culture than you know people over here in the smaller smaller town okay i can answer that um for me working on the mexicans for the last five years i have noticed that when i do events in san diego the turnout is very poorly it's very poor so when i do events in la arizona more in the bay area the turnout is really high and i think it's because we are so close to the border so there's not that añoranza that people are not missing it i think in the last i will say like three years it's been um uh an awakening for um first generation second generation more like second third generation kids that are looking and longing for uh answers of their roots so i think it's, it's slowly developing here in more border towns but if you go a little bit higher uh, the wanting and the longing is is higher definitely i think we take it for granted that we have everything in our hands right now it's like we can cross the border fortunately and um get some tacos or get some type of like when everyone's speaking spanish go to the mercado you have that at walking distance and um i know that there's markets in la um but just 
having family so close, it's like, voy a casa de mi abuela, or voy a con mis primos, or um, it's definitely different. I, my friend who um, was a uh, teacher in L.A., she, she told me there's, like, the culture in L.A. is so different from the culture. It's like different cultures, being like a border town girl where I can just cross and come back in a couple of hours and go to Ensenada, Rosarito, I can go to Mexicali, and just have Mexico so near that sometimes we we take it for granted. It's That's como que, I don't like, it, it's funny because we do our Mexican fiesta at our school, and um, we wear probably our, our Mexican shirts, las, las blusas bien bonitas de diferentes estados, but growing up in, in Mexico, or even like new teachers from um, that they come from Mexico, they're like, I never wear las blusas mexicanas, nunca hasta ahorita que soy maestra. Like I would never go and buy something. And that's true. Like growing up, I would never go and my mom would buy me anything that was like folclorico until right now as an adult. It's like I want to represent to my students and to people all of these dif different cultures around Mexico because it's not only one culture, there's so many different ones yeah. so as border kids we take it for granted and there's no conversations between like unless you're really into history and your own roots mm -hmm. where really are you from yeah you're because i in my experience i've never my family's like city because i don't have family that goes back to um for example like another town in inner mexico that was not my experience growing up. My experiences was like Tijuana, San Diego. I don't have any other family in Mexico. So yeah. I think that's like we take it for granted because we're so close to. Estamos nada más a un salto. Yeah. And something that, um, you know, I mentioned Mark um, and something that he, he his answer to me was because um, I asked him, you know, why do you feel like our parents never really talked to us about because my parents never really talked to about my culture, you know, my Mexican mm -hmm. roots and my culture. And he's like, you know what? I think that the reason that it wasn't really important for them was because they were so busy trying to learn this new culture, you know, the American culture, that they didn't really have the time to, you know, sit down and talk to us about, you know, their past mm -hmm. or their culture. And 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 the thing is, like, I don't I don't even like thinking about my my uncles that live in Mexicali that you know have always lived there. I don't think they've ever also neither they they've never also talked about you know our culture you know they just are just living life you know like I feel like that we're so busy you know I mean those people that those people that um don't talk about it I think they're so busy with you know just life that they really don't find it necessary to keep our culture and our traditions alive and and I I feel that you know looking at your what you do on 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 Instagram, I think it's really important and it's really, you know, awesome that you're doing this with, you know, and especially um, because you, you guys talk to a lot of authors and creators, um, you know, books that are talking about their cultures and it, it's not only Mexican culture, it's, you know, all, all, all kinds of cultures. And I feel that, you know, as a kid growing up, um, I don't think I've, I don't think I can remember uh, reading a book where, you know, it was talking about, you know, somebody like me, a, a, you know, brown kid or Hispanic kid. And I feel that, you know, you guys are doing a great job. So um, can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, um, book, uh, New Year's Book Fest? So it started, um, we started, we met in January. But prior to meeting um, as, um, with Aide, um, I my husband and I have a shop in, in Barrio Logan. It's called Marta Market, um, where we ha um, have organic and healthy products made by Mexicans and um, Latinos and Mexican-American entrepreneurs. So I wanted to have something for the community because there's always um, events in Barrio Logan. It's family-oriented, but there's nothing that is, like, for children. So um, during – so I had a meeting with um, a founder that has some mini libraries here in Barrio Logan. And he wanted to create something together, so I, um, I told him, let's do some family readings. We should have some family readings here at the coffee shop during the days where it's kind of slow. There's not a lot of people, and families can come. 
They can sit down with their parents and do a cafecito. And we can invite people from the community and read. Read um, stories that, like you said, would portray themselves or um, any type of book that they um, liked when they were growing up. So that's how we started. We started, I don't remember, I think it was like September, but every month we had one reading with someone from the community. So we reached out to Aide, um, and she was our um, was our guest for, was it September, Aide? Do you know the month? I or think... October? I think it was September, October, because we did something very uh, Day of the Dead. We did something very Day of the Dead. She read her the book that she um, designed, which is called Frida Catlo. So it's like a story of a little kitten, but with Frida. And later on, um, Wayne, who's um, part of the, the mini libraries, he put out a post and he said, any ideas of what we want to do for the community? And I did. I did. What did you um, send to him? I put like a maybe to maybe it's really out there, but we should think of doing like a bilingual book festival. So it was scary. It was a very scary idea to put there in the universe, <laughs> and uh, and it was like a it was a cautious response. So it was a, a cautious response, but I they, um, she contacted us, and I'm a person that always, like, wants to try new things and wanna, wants to learn, so I'm just like, yes, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, Giselle is great on that. Like, she, if if I tell her a crazy idea, <laughs> she will run with it. So she, if you want to do something challenging, just go to Giselle. I'm like, I'm, I'm not scared to try anything new. I mean, it's like, I'm not perfectionist and I don't look at the little details. So I'm like, oh, let's just do it. <laughs> so, and that's how we, we came about. We would start meeting here in Bar Logan um, on Sundays. We would yeah. take a cafecito and this was pre-COVID. So it was last year during this time right now, yeah. March. Um, and we decided to start, we collaborated with, um, La Bodega Gallery, which is an art gallery here in Barrio Logan, and they jumped in as well. We had meetings with them, and then what happened? I did. So, and then uh, we had a website. We had like a, a, a almost secure lineup, and then COVID happened. <laughs> so we had a day. We had a venue. We had even a few sponsors, and then COVID happened. And then uh, people started getting scared. People started like uh, backing out of the event, like they, they weren't going to do it. Everybody was and understandable, like I'm very unsure what's, what was going to happen. And we were like, you know what? We have done so much work on this project. Like we have dedicated like seven days a week. All, all this, we still have our nine to five jobs, our side hustle, plus the Niños Bookfest, our husbands, our dogs, everything. <laughs> so uh, we had spent so many hours and we thought, let's just do it virtually. I think that would be also a great opportunity for us to try something that is new and to see the response. Definitely. And um, it was um, it was a success. I mean, like you said, it's easier to to have people join in the cause when everyone's online and there's mostly at home. Um, and we didn't have a um, like a big expectation of how many people would join and like authors join us because we were new. Nobody knew us, um, but we really wanted to advocate for. Um, the Spanish um, book written by um, Latino authors, Latinx authors, or even bring, we also brought um, from the Filipino community um, to kind of be inclusive and, and have that opportunity of languages. But um, we had a lot of people um, reach out to us that they wanted to 
to be in before we I think we only had one day, right, Ida? Yes, the original plan when we had the venue, it was one day for four hours. Yes, four hours to interact with people, give free books, have a, a craft events, shows, like stuff like that, a few vendors, most of them local because nobody wanted to travel and and rest because we they didn't know us. But after we decided to go virtually, a virtual it went from one day to two days to three days and people who weren't available before were available now. And it was great. Definitely. And we had also, um, we had a concurso, a contest for children to send out their arts and we did a virtual gallery for them. We had makers creating things online and we would go along and follow them doing like um, hicieron como pulseritas, um, que más hicieron como tejieron. Mm -hmm. So we have a diverse um, lineup. Yeah. And so it was fun. It was fun. We were like really busy interviewing uno tras otro. Yeah. Um, it was fun it, because yeah. also we had people. Not only it expanded because the original plan was to have local people from San Diego and some of them from El Barrio, but we have people from uh, Mexico City. We have people representing the Philippines, Venezuela, Republica Dominicana. Uh, it, it was so great. And also um, we had giveaways. People were also like the authors were willing to give a book and before they weren't, they weren't sure. So they were like, hey, I want to give a book. I want to give this or that. And and the turnout was better than we expected because we were just so fresh and so new to, to the festivals. So uh, it, it was great. So so were your plans were, um, it was just like a one day thing. But it was it. Did you ever think that it would become like a kind of like a, this series that you guys are doing now on Instagram? So, um, <laughs> so what I think we expected to, um, we only expected that like um, the Niños Book Fest to be one day. We didn't expect to have so many people reach out to us, so we had to open so many slots. And then from there, we continue. People still continue to send us uh, messages. Um, and we opened it to um, our weekly reading. We stopped for a while because, well, it was a lot of work and we needed to um, decompress and then share ideas and um, to how to move forward. And um, it started to um, look like into weekly readings with different authors, kind of like the, the fest, but it would be... Um, every other week or we wouldn't buy by um like themes like we had this month or for black history month we had afro latinos or african americans that had um, bilingual books and so we've been doing it by themes basically and we are in the works for our second annual bilingual um dia de los niños book fest yes and also is the day that we decided to do uh but the bilingual festival was in mexico april 30th is uh dia de los niños mm -hmm. and in mexico is super important that day yeah. and we noticed that here in the states even if it's the supporter town there's no celebration of it so it was also uh uh like a, an opportunity to join that uh festival that is very dear and dear uh near and dear from our hearts that is uh dia de los niños plus a few days earlier earlier is uh dia del libro here in in the states so we wanted to to uh blend the two the two uh holidays and that's it was, a, that's a really good idea uh yeah because yeah dia de los niños dia de los niños like, you know i'm living here in calexico i think that recently um it's become a thing where like schools and in our local library are, are making it a thing to, you know, promote and, and do something for the kids. They'll do like a uh, play fest or whatever, but you know, they're, they're starting to 
make it more of a thing. Yeah, and, and at least for me, when I was a child, Dia del Niño, it was such a fun day at school. Mm. It was super fun. And so we wanted to do that, but with the component of, of learning and reading as well. So like Giselle mentioned, uh, we are currently working on the second bilingual book fest. It's going to be virtual. Uh, we want to give opportunity to the people that uh, that uh, didn't have the chance to to show their books or their skills. So uh, hopefully we can have um, as many participants as last year. And another focus that we would like to do is like to give that opportunity to independent publishers. So and because sometimes they don't have the the money or the um, advertisement for them to put out their book because they self-publish their book. So it, it's harder to be in those change bookstores or the library. So we want to also um, just support them as we see that there's a lot of um, Latinos, Latinx that are um, self-publishing um, their own books. Yeah, definitely. And and because I, I have worked in the publishing work for for a, for a few years and we, at least I noticed there is an immense lack of diversity. And the and the five big houses of publishing, they tend to uh write books for and be honest to for white people. And even the the books they are supposed to be uh for uh, minority groups, they're more like uh, written in a way for white people to understand it. And this, there's an extremely lack of representation. And even like Giselle mentioned a, a, a few minutes ago, that the books, they are in Spanish, they are a translation in Spanish of American books, like written in English by white people. So like a lot of like Dr. Seuss or stuff like that. So we wanted to give this uh, like a like a home for independent book publishers, independent authors, independent illustrators, graphic designers too. That they tend to be like a the silent workhorse in the publishing world. So uh, we just want to give them a platform for them to at least have uh, their book out there and 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 promote them and where can they find their books, where we can buy their books. And uh, as also libraries, we Im we invite also small independent bookstores by Latino or uh, minorities so they can promote their bookstores because they tend to give a platform to those authors as well. Yeah, that's great. How do you how do you guys go about finding, um, you know, all these authors that you've been uh, promoting on, on your Instagram page? Uh, a lot of reading, a lot of searching. Instagram has been a great platform mm -hmm. to find um, independent uh, authors, illustrators, and designers. Um, I know there's a lot of book festivals, a lot of children's book festivals, but they're all owned by the big five publishing groups. So uh, they tend not to um, to go to those independent pub uh, authors. So... Um, it's just doing a lot of research, reading. Uh, I I also uh, tend to to go to newsletters like Publishers Weekly, uh, so I can see what's the latest on the in news in publishing world. Like what authors are up and coming, who is having a deal, who's not, who has representation. So. If somebody, there's a like a name that I can see that, okay, okay, maybe this person, I can see that they're super talented, but they don't have the platform. We just invite them and call them up. And usually they're available. They just don't have the platform to that because uh, the publishing world doesn't usually back them up because they don't think there's a, a big stigma to that. Like they don't think that they don't make enough books for us because they think that, that we don't read. We're not the clientele that read, but that's not necessarily true. Um, there's not books for us because they don't want to give us that platform. So 
I think slowly but surely is is waking up. Uh, in in thanks, but in, unfortunately, with the the whole uh, George Floyd uh, situation, I think has been a really big wake up call to a lot of um, a lot of uh, in the like different departments, like in consumer public products and publishing. That you know what, maybe uh, there there is an audience that we need to focus on. You know. Yeah, yeah, and it could, like. Like you said, um, you know, it's kind of sad that, you know, sometimes tragedy happens, needs to happen to kind of like them to realize that, um, you know, we're, we're yeah. here. Yeah. Definitely. And then we consume everything that's like given to us. Unfortunately, like if I go, if I would go to my classroom when I started, if you see all the books, it's like books that are recommended by the publishers, books recommended by um, when they go to your school and then they sell you different um, books, so you buy those books because that's the only option that you have and you don't really go about to go and research. So unfortunately, if you go to my library of books in my classroom, you have all the same books that everybody has, but you don't branch out. And thanks to um, Nina's Book Fest, I was able to learn more about different um, at the next authors and started to buy their books and started to um, share the platform and then it's so cool that you can like I would um, share with my students like a video I'm like remember that we read this book this is the author so you have that resource now where um, we um, help or we're trying to build a community where you can see that there's more than the same book that you see at the bookstores more books with diverse um, themes, diverse um, characters, settings that go along where, where you're from. Like you said, that you didn't have anyone um, give you or share books or read aloud that would portray someone like you or your situation. And now there's mm -hmm. so many, many stories that we can share with our students. I'm in the classroom. If I know my composition of students, I make sure that, okay, I'm going to Bring, bring a, a book in Portuguese because your family is from Brazil and you have at least one or two options. So you can feel proud of yourself and you can take it home and, and read. Or you have someone that is Muslim and you have those books. And you're Muslim by Latinx and you have those books in the classroom where it's like you and your mom. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just so important to bring that diversity in the classroom and um, also brought about your own books that go along with your classroom or your family um, mm -hmm. experience. Yeah, and, and it's and it's um say um somebody that's that's not me um, Hispanic or Mexican that might uh, read that book, they might learn a little bit more about our culture and and what our maybe our our household is like or why we are a certain way, uh, you know, because of our culture, the way we live our lives and in, in, in home at home and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's a good way to kind of um uh you know other people not only us feel uh included but other people kind of learn of you know some of our the, the way we are and and why we're like that yeah definitely and i think mostly uh oh like you were talking about like a lot of generations from my parents or grandparents like when they first migrated here i think there's a there's a big stigma that they grew up that they were they had to choose either you could be this or be that either you're gonna speak english or speak spanish it was almost an ultimatum to them but now I think the kids in this new newer generation, they were like, you know what? I can be both and there's nothing wrong with it. Like uh, bilingual is an asset. So it's a skill that is going to take me uh, further. And also when you have bi more bilingual books, either from Spanish, Portuguese, uh, from uh, different languages, it also, it, it, creates a culture of empathy, like you mentioned. So we need to have more options in, in every shape, way, or form to create that culture of empathy that I think has been lacking for the last few years. And I think something as simple as a book can create that. Yeah. 
Um, and it's funny how you guys were you were talking about how um, in the beginning not a lot of people were um, willing or comfortable and and being part of the book fest. Um, and because it happened to me when I was when I first started, you know, with a podcast, um, you know, uh, people were like kind of vetting me, like kind of like, who are you? Like, why do you want to talk to me? Or or you know, what's especially when it came to people um, that were like city council or the city manager like people think always think that um you know they're out, you're out to get them or you're trying to like go get this aha moment but mm-hmm. but you know at the beginning to like you mentioned um it was hard for you to get more people but now you know i see that it's become like a weekly thing that you guys are having guests um every week um do you think most of these people that are you know you've, you've talked um are going to be part of the next uh book fest yeah, we hope so. We hope so. We had an um, um an amazing uh there's some of our uh like different guests that we had they had really connected with the audience. So we have hopefully they can have the time because also they're busy uh to to get them back. So and someone has I mean there's one author that Every time I talk to him, he touches my heart tremendously. That is uh, Rene Colato, and he's the sweetest man, and he's also a teacher. Mm-hmm. And But there's something about him that it just resonates so much with me. And I'm pretty sure uh, some of our listeners have their favorite authors as well. Who, who does the artwork for like all of your posts? I think it, it's a combination of the both of us. <laughs> no, no, no. All the artwork is Aide. She's a graphic designer. Um, she does beautiful artwork. So um, I help out in other um, situations, but all the artwork is made by Aide and her creativity. So props to you, Aide. Do not include me in your art because <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's something that, you know, something that I always, you know, when I see your post is like, it's so colorful. It's so, you know, these colors that. I think represent our culture um, a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, like it's always like, I, I always enjoy watching, you know, your post um, and, and and not only your post, but you know, your, your, your interviews and your, and your reads, but something that always catches my eye is, you know, your, your art, you know, the way you, 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 you uh, promote your, your, your events and stuff like that. It's really, really, really amazing props to you. Oh, thank you. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit? I know you you talked about your your favorite guest, well, one of the persons that you you enjoy talking to. But can you tell us a little bit more um, about most some of the guests that you've had on? So, uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, we just recently had another guest that it was um, Ty Allen Jackson. So he had a book called um, Donnie Dollar. And he talked about uh, the importance of saving in like in the black community. And also it can translate to a, another um, cultures or a lot of communities like the Latino. And it was such a, an amazing and fresh conversation because also as Latino, you don't talk about money. You know, you have the stigma. It is, eres una grosera si le preguntas a tu papá cuánto gana, ¿no? Like little stuff like that. And he just simplified it and, and made a book about it for kids to, to start investing, to start getting familiar with those words. And we had a lot of um, like positive feedback. So I think something as simple also as like, and, and challenging, simple and challenging, like money, uh, just to make it so accessible for us. Because sometimes we, is it, they separ- separate us from those, those type, type of uh, topics. And I think it's important. Mm-hmm. Another author that we've had is Maybe Reynoso. Uh-oh, we lost her. So, Okay, I can uh, talk about Naive. Naive Reynoso, she is the founder of Contodo Press. So she's an amazing lady. She is like super, super talented. She's definitely like a hustler 
She's, uh, I think she's a, a reporter, a journalist, plus she has her own publishing company that she started a few years ago, that is Con Todo Press. And she's always been very uh, open and uh, accessible for us. So um, she's just a great lady. She has a book about uh, different Latinos in, Latinas in history, different Latinos in history, and she just uh, had a new book that is How to Fall a Taco. And that was really fun. Like what she loves about a taco. <laughs> I guess we lost. Um, Giselle. Giselle. Yeah. Well, maybe she'll be back right now. But <laughs> yeah, she'll be back. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's crazy how you, this started as a, as a kind of like a book fest. And now it's evolved into, you know, this weekly reading thing. And, and I really hope that, you know. I mean, I'm going to really promote it a lot, you know, your Instagram page, because Thank I feel you. it's 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 important to to get to know about our culture and different cultures. And and it's and it's fun to see, like you said, um, what Ty um, mentioned in his book or what he, the book he wrote. You know, it's really important that, you know, they're they're finding ways to um, kind of teach uh, our generation, young generations on how to save money or, or you know, all these different things that that we normally don't talk about in our in our families or at mm -hmm. school um but but yeah it's really really you know like i said like it's it, every time i see your your instagram page it's it's really fun it's really col colorful it's really you know it's 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 a happy place to, uh, like at least for me i see it's a, it's a happy place and and i can see how you know how you're 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 re trying to reach you know families and kids yeah, definitely. That's the goal. I mean, to and to have something that is accessible because everybody has access to a book. Even maybe you don't have a, like the means at that moment to purchase the latest, brightest copy of a, a book, but you can go to your local library. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go to school and, and, and access that book. And something as simple, it can create a lot of impact for you. Like uh, for me, books created a lot of impact in my childhood and books that my grandfather shared with me. Like uh, he, I knew that every time I go to his uh, uh, house when I visited on the weekends, there will be a stack of comic books for me or a brand new book or an old book or something like that. And it's something that we share uh, as a family. So hopefully... We, we want to to encourage parents to to start reading more with their kids and there's a lot of options that now that they can see themselves not only as an individual but as a family mm -hmm. yeah and, and it's funny you know earlier you guys mentioned um like dr seuss or you know all these books that you know growing up you would see at your you know in your classroom you know teacher the teacher had like this little library like these are all the books that you normally saw um and you know looking at the the books that you guys promote and read you know it's 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 a lot like a version of you know those books that we read growing up as as kids but you know it's relating to us it's talking it's talking to us and and it's it's really um encouraging to see that and and you know i don't know if i haven't been to my library since a while back but mm -hmm. you know I, I, i'm gonna see if once we we can go back to the library i'm gonna see if you know they have some of these books and authors and if they don't you know i'm, I'm definitely gonna you know ask my library to see if they can yeah. get get some copies of this yeah and also this is one of the things that we advocate too that okay maybe your library doesn't have it maybe your local bookstore doesn't have it but you can ask for it even if you go to barnes and noble you can ask for it and keep asking for it and the demand is going to be so high that they're going to put it there mm. so uh i think that's also uh like a, something important not only okay i purchased the book if it's available but if it's not available i'm going to make some noise so they can have it in my local library or in my bookstore, or something like that. It, hi, Giselle. <laughs> back, sorry, my phone is like, it was too hot, so it's like, emergency, hot temperature. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also, we are very careful, uh, Giselle and I, that uh, to go, if we're going to find um, a book, like a theme book, or something like that, 
that is it it goes with it like i know that it was gonna be uh like black history month make sure they they're afro latinos because sometimes we go and and we see a book maybe from with some afro latino characters but it's written by a white person or illustrated by a white person or someone that has nothing to do with that culture and although okay it's is we're grateful that this book is, exists but also it's given uh people of color and minorities a platform so they can shine yeah definitely uh-huh. um so just you know um you know we talked a lot about yourself and and, and the and the instagram page um is there anything else that you know you guys would like to add um before we any closing thoughts I know um, um, Giselle's phone's burning up, so like I kind of wanna <laughs> wanna kind of close up. But yeah, any 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 closing thoughts that you guys would like to add? I think we just want to thank you, Capapa Calexico, for reaching out and give us also a platform to share to everyone that um, we should be proud of our heritage and we should advocate for um, authors that are Latinx and they are. I'm sharing our stories and you the only way that you can support them is like it's by following them reaching out to them but also asking for their books to your local libraries and bookstores that's what I learned from Aide that when you do that it's like you give a voice to them that they are needed in our community yeah most definitely yeah definitely thank you thank you Jose for the platform uh, we're really grateful for this opportunity and yes to our followers and listeners that we're working really hard for making the second bilingual book fest happen hopefully we can have share some news soon and um and if someone is interested in participating yes send us a dm at nino's uh book fest or an email at nino's book fest at gmail.com we will love to hear from you. We will love to support you, promote you, whatever is necessary. We are a community and we are here for each other. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and I want to thank you guys for taking this time um, and talking to me. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I really appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, and 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 a lot of my guests I, I find through Instagram and that's how I find you guys. And and I know that a lot of the guests that you 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 know have on your on your weekly readings is through instagram and i feel that instagram is a really good tool to find a lot of creative um people that are doing positive positive things um um in their communities in our community and and you know i really want to you know i hope people because right now social media and the internet is kind of like a crazy place you know you can fall into a lot of rabbit holes and and you know go crazy but you know, just, I guess just to me, like I try to follow and, and look at people that are, you know, doing positive things that are, you know, that's Instagram's kind of like my happy place, right? You know, I, I follow mm-hmm. a lot of people that, that, you know, make me happy and I like looking at their content and, and you guys are definitely one of them, one of the top people that I like to see and, and, and follow. And, you know, I, I, I try to, you know, watch your readings um, and, 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 you know, I really, really, really appreciate it and hope that, um, like I said, once you guys have your the dates and, and for your events, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely promote them. I'm gonna definitely promote your Instagram page a lot. Um, and once my library is open, I'm gonna see if you know some of these books are there so that you know my ki- the kids in my community have a chance to to read them and and learn more about you know different cultures in in our in our communities and and like yeah, thank you thank you guys for taking this time. Um, I really really appreciate it. Gracias, Jose. El placer es nuestro. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening and watching. Um, make sure you are, you guys are safe. Wear your face mask, social distance. Um, follow Niños Book Fest on Instagram um, and share with your friends and family because you know it's a really, really, really good information for our our kids that you know all these books that they can read that kind of um, helps them learn about themselves and other cultures. Um, Please, please follow them. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.